taking uh, jobs, mostly from Seek, interestingly enough, and linking them out to my social network. And I'll explain why in a moment. I'm not a recruiter. I don't get anything from doing this, except trust and reputation with my network. I have around right about 13,000 followers on Twitter. I have between 30,000 and 100,000 views of my blog each month. And, and it varies depending on whether I've actually blogged anything. Um, and I, I, when I pump these out, I always try to put in a, some sort of a cute message with it as well. And a huge number of people will retweet, retweet the messages that I'm sending out. I'm an individual, I'm not in recruitment, I'm not looking at this job myself, I'm simply passing on the information to the rest of the world. And about 80% of people in social media are not creating content consistently, but they are performing the four Fs. Find, filter, finesse, or make a comment, and then forward. Find cool stuff, find links, find something my social network might like. Uh, filter it, decide who would like it. Is it suitable for Twitter or LinkedIn or where? Uh, finesse it and put a funny comment on it, and then forward it on. And it's a way of building trust and reputation within my social network. And this is really important because it means every single person out there who have always performed word of mouth in small <coughs> circles now have the ability to create large distribution channels and are naturally doing this without even thinking. But I'm not silly. Every time I send out that link, I use Bitly, I want to measure it. And Bitly allows me to see how many people clicked through and were interested on that link. Now let's move moving into the more professional use, less personal use of these tools. It gives me the graphs, um, locations, referrers, who was interested in that job and how were they interested in it. And this is something the companies are asking me all the time. I want to track the conversations around something that I'm running, a job campaign or any other kind of campaign. And this particular tool allows me to see how many people retweeted it, discussed it, linked to it, or in other words, referenced it in some way. And in this case, there's 96 conversations around that job. I don't want to go into the tools too much, but job press, uh, WordPress is probably the most popular blogging tool out there. How many people here have a blog, by the way? Okay, so what's that about? 15 of you? How many people have started a blog and given it up because it's too much like hard work? I've got about six blogs that say, no, no. I just ignore them. I haven't looked at them for about a year or two years. Um, this is a plugin that allows every blogger to run a job site on their blog. And I'm considering doing it on mine. Am I going to put lots and lots of jobs up there? No. But if you wanted a job as a social media person or social network strategist, you could come and have a look at my site, and chances are, I would collect those jobs and place them up here. Pro Blogger, who's one of, who is Australia's top blogger um, from Melbourne, Darren Maus. I don't know if he uses this exact tool, but he uses a similar free or shareware tool. And he said he makes around about $1,000 a month from job ads. And that doesn't sound like much, does it? But he's so gleeful. I make 1000 bucks a month from job ads. And what I recognise is he knows that that's not his core um, revenue stream, but it's absolutely a service that he's providing to all of his readers. It's another reason for him to come back and read his blog. He targets only jobs where people are looking for bloggers and copywriters that can write blog material. So it's very, very, very niche. And uh, it, he doesn't have to do anything to make that thousand bucks. People just come, register, and do it themselves. And um, I think Jobber Base is the one that. Um, Gavin Hitton, Seven of Chaos, uses for his site. Again, shareware, again, three click install, and looks quite nice when it's running, although Joe Adam might not like it. Um, and free, and it's, you know, if you are a blogger or somebody who wants to be known for writing articles in biotechnology and <coughs> nanomedicine, you might put a job order, and you may only have 20 jobs a year, but you will have specifically the jobs that your readers are looking for. <coughs> Looking for a job. I could just put in marketing Australia and jobs and start to look at the jobs that are coming through on Twitter if I use them on the search. But what we're starting to see is um, semantic search engines, which means artificially intelligent search engines, which give me a lot more information. And I'm choosing Twitter at this point in time. Um, how many people here on Twitter, please? 
Okay, so quite a few of you. And the reason for that is Twitter doesn't take anywhere near the same amount of time that blogging does. All you have to do is write a couple of sentences a day, right? And you're still connected with people. For those of you who aren't on Twitter, just very quickly, Twitter does four things. You post up testimonials. I'm going to lunch, I'm taking the kids to school, I'm bored, I'm angry at my boss, I hate my job. You get the idea. The second one is social search. This is where you open a broadcast question you may or may not get an answer. Does anyone know where I can buy batteries in Canada? Um, does anyone know where I can get a job as an accountant? That sort of thing. So it's social search. And it is a slowly starting to replace Google search. And somebody said to me once, why would you use, why are you using Twitter search instead of Google search? And I said, because I trust my networks to give me the answer that I want, not 38 million results, which may or may not be what I want. The third thing we do with Twitter is we use it for um, at conversations. So we put the at in front of somebody's name and then direct a message backwards and forwards. So it's a little bit like the Facebook wall. It's an open discussion and that people can join in, but it's directed to people. And um, the fourth thing we do, which is the important one here, is distribution. We find a link and forward it on. So the content is actually outside of Twitter, but we're passing it through Twitter. So they're the four key things for those of you that aren't on Twitter, that's what people do. The tool that I really like is Twitter Job Search. This is, a set, um, I guess, uh, an AI engine, and it's looking and allowing you to search for jobs being referenced to or discussed on Twitter. What does it look like? And it's like this. It's, um, it actually looks at the link, goes off, checks the page that the link is referring to, and double checks the keywords around the tweet to the page to make sure that it is a job that's being discussed. And it's not just somebody saying, I've got a job to do in the garden. So it's always looking for that kind of reference. And there's um, a whole range of tools built into here as well. And I was, the reason why I want to show this is not to go into it too much because I think other people probably will cover some of these tools, but it's just to say the answer to too much information is more information. So anytime you feel like you do a search on Twitter and you get millions of results, there is a specific tool somewhere using semantic web 3.0, whatever technology, uh, technological term you want to use, that will solve your problem for you. And this one allows you to save tweets, allows you to respond to tweets, allows you to retweet stuff. It just has a huge amount of tools within its dashboard for recruiters. And by the way, it's free. When we look at uh, uh, influence, it often becomes decision time for people about where their loyalties lie. So this is a, uh, a professional pilot's board where they are talking about who they've had as, um, they're mostly private pilots, and they're talking about people that they've hated flying around. So I'm sure their bosses would love to know that Scylla Black is universally hated by pilots, and they're all um, being very clear about how what her behavior was like on the flight. Really tricky because there's a, I would say, the, the private airlines don't know that this board is up there. They're not doing any social media monitoring. This is a classic one, Cisco Fatty. Cisco just offered me a job, now I have to wear the utility of a fatty paycheck to get the day to commute to San Jose and hating the work. And this was put up on Twitter. Now you've got to remember this person probably had 36 followers. She had 36 friends. What she wasn't aware of was that Twitter search type engine where Cisco employees, recruitment and hiring managers are sitting there getting daily emails and tweets referencing Cisco and jobs and this sort of thing. So the response was, who is the hiring manager? I'm sure they would love to know that you hate the work. And she was quite shocked by that. She tried to delete it, but by this time it had been captured on red. And this website's called CiscoFatty.com, if you want to go read the whole story. <laughs> it means that no matter how good your social media staff going on, how good your organization about thou built and thou will not on social media sites, sometimes it's the incomings that cause the problems, and definitely the outgoings. 